raw XML, parse it, and give back XML data structure. Uh, but we don't have an uh, official way to do that right now. We we're looking, maybe possibly looking at the 1.3, not sure yet. But at least for tables, is that we're so, or sorry, at least for HTML, one thing that we want to do is be able to support the ability to pass in tags in an XML like that. So in this case, you have a table with a closing slash, uh, just a you know, standard level. The, the problem is, though, is that you can't uh, normally do this in HTML. Uh, if, if you try to do that in your page, your page will freak out. Your whole, ta your whole page will be encapsulated in a table, and it will really get messed up. So what we have to do is, when we're cleaning up, we have to go through and clean up all these tags that are written in this manner and put them in the correct HTML like manner. The second part that we do is so converting this HTML string into an actual doc. And in this case, we, uh, we create a, an empty div and we take the string and we put it in using inner HTML. Uh, it's pretty much all it is to it. There, 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 I mean, there, as far as converting it into a DOM, there's not a whole lot of magic there. Because now we can have you know, the dot child notes and we can just extract the notes back out of it. But the problem is, is that this doesn't work for all uh, HTML elements. It, it works for a lot of them, but it doesn't work for ones <coughs> like uh, table rows, uh, table captions, options, and a select, uh, legends. And so in, th in those cases, we have to physically encapsulate the HTML in its correct parent structure. So that way, when we inject it into the div and extract it back out again, we have the correct contents. So now when we inject it into the page, this is the, the final step. Both those steps are pretty well optimized at this point. There's not a whole lot of overhead. The inserting part is what gets really slow. So let's say, for example, you have 100 places on the page where you want to insert you know, five nodes. Uh, that's 500 different inserts you have to do. Additionally, that is also uh, 500 clones you have to do. So it, right now what we do in, um, in jQuery is this, uh, we only have uh, these, let's say, you know, five nodes and that we want to insert into all these places. We have to clone it every single time we want to insert. So again, so we're, we're going cloning and we're going inserting every single time, so across, you know, let's say, 500 items. And it's really slow. Um, so I wrote a plugin to make this a lot faster. Uh, just a, a, as a demonstration. I don't know if I have it. Uh, oh, I did. Nice. All right, so here's an example of the time. So time A is the time in milliseconds to insert the old jQuery, right? the one that's in there right now. And this is the time to do it uh, with the modified version. So that's, that's more than 10 times uh, uh, faster. So I just wanted to show you the code here. So I'm actually, I'm completely overwriting. So we have this function in jQuery called dominant. And that is the function responsible for inserting uh, into the page. So there's another function in jQuery clean. That is the function responsible for cleaning the input and converting it into a DOM. So we, the, these two functions uh, you know, live side by side. So the important part here, though, is this uh, create document fragment. Right? So what happens is, so we, we insert, we inject this, the HTML here. So we create, we create our fake div, inject the HTML. And then we extract those nodes back out again, right here. We, we extract them back out. And we stick this up called a document fragment. So a document fragment isn't used a whole lot, uh, commonly in uh, web development. But because, uh, you know, in, in, in the web and the DOM, you have documents. A document encapsulates, uh, so for example, an entire HTML page. You have individual nodes, so text or element, uh, those portions. But a fragment is able to encapsulate a whole bunch of nodes. And so it's sort of like a, a loose collection, right? And say we're, so we're able to push all these nodes into this loose collection. But the advantage is, is that you can take this loose collection and insert it into the page all at, in one single statement. So like right here, so uh, yeah, this, so this is where we're inserting. We take the fragment, we're able to clone the entire fragment simultaneously. So not individual node, individual node, over and over again. And we're able to insert the entire fragment all at once. And what happens is, is that when the fragment is inserted, 
uh, you don't have this large bulky fragmented page. It, it, it just it just kind of melts away. And what's left are all just the nodes that you want to insert. So it's, it ends up being incredibly fast, uh, as we showed, and, and just improve performance uh, tremendously. Yes. So the if you, is that for when you're inserting into a single element or you if you're inserting 500 <coughs> elements into 500 other elements, it all just happens at once. Yeah, so, so uh, at least in this example here, I'm, a, I'm inserting, let's see how many I'm inserting. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, that's four elements into, however many divisions on this page, there's a lot. There's, I'd say at least a couple hundred. So yeah, so what, what's happening is, is that this, this fragment is encapsulating uh, these four elements. And so that when it's, when it, when it's inserted again and again, and so this loop here, uh, that's looping over the 500 divs that we just found, and inserting each individual one and each individual one. It's really good. The, the, I think the only catch is that Internet Explorer thinks that it's a document or something, uh, but but it doesn't matter because you can still clone it and insert it. So I mean, that's the part that I care about. Um, yeah, I was when I was messing around with it, I was like, oh man, it's going to totally fail Internet Explorer. But no, it it, it, it works. So I'm, I'm pleased. Will that code that you just showed work for all elements? I'm not sure inserting it into a div, or is this sort of a proof of concept that? Um, good question. I think it's proof of concept because I think right now I have to replace this line or these two lines with a call of jQuery clean, okay. which clean you know cleans up the input. Right, right now I'm just playing. Okay. I tested it with jQuery clean to see if that was over, but that's not the source of overhead since it's only a call once. Mm -hmm. It's the repetition that kills you. <laughs> I, I guess I'm a little unclear as to how you're repeating that step if you still have to loop over all of the divs and you still have to. All right, so, yes. so, so, so what's happened is so previously what, what would happen is that, for example, uh, so we have this up length, and that might be equal to you know, 100 elements, let's say. And then, and then we have the individual nodes. Uh, let's just say, no, is that like, you know, five. Okay. So what, what we're reducing, you know, 500 calls over and over again, down to the fact that nodes is now one, and all of it in that nodes, since it's just a fragment. Uh, okay. so, so now, we, so the link, so we're still inserting, you know, 200 elements. But the nodes, fragment, is only one. So now the total number of calls it, 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 it's, it's cut and, and okay. uh, so that yeah, that that's the uh, re redu reducing the number of calls by many factors. Oh, I explained that right now. Okay, so events. One thing I wanted to show that uh, most people aren't aware of uh, is that so in jQuery you can obviously you can combine events to elements. And you can trigger, so you can bind both real events and custom events. So you can create your own event name, you can trigger your own event, event name, uh, that works. But one thing you can also do is that you can bind events to things that aren't DOM elements. So in this case, this, this is a, a, a plain JavaScript object. Uh, it could be a, a JavaScript flat or a class. That, I mean, so we, we could have, let's say, uh, And then you know, we, we can call, we can bind something to the, the user object and say, uh, what, are, what are you just doing? <coughs> Log in or not? Sign up for <laughs> Yeah, so, so log in, and we'll trigger the login. So you, you can start to use this event binding and trigger uh, for your pure JavaScript code writer, which, I, which we, I think is pretty cool. It, gives you, it starts to give you a lot of leverage. Um, it is, uh, personally, I think that it's a more efficient way to write JavaScript. Uh, opinions may differ. 
Another thing um, that we have is that it helps to keep 